let's start moving things around so that we can actually get the router and route to our different pages. So to start, we're going to have a nav bar at the top of this that is going to route to the three different pages that we have. We'll go into appcomponent.ts and on top of the Jumbotron, we're going to add a nav bar and we'll also do header to be a little semantic with it. And we'll do nav class We'll do a nav bar header, and this is all just basic bootstrap classes. This will be the placement of our logo. Below that, we'll finally add our navigation buttons. Notice I'm just putting hashtags in for the href. The Angular router has their own specific way of adding links to a tags. So the href here isn't really relevant for us. All right, now we have our three navigation links. We have our logo here, all above our application. Let's take a look and see how that looks. All right, home, about, and contact. Now they don't go anywhere yet, so let's start moving towards our routing application. There's a couple steps that need to happen when we're dealing with starting a routing app. The number one step is going into index.html and setting our base. This is important because it will tell the Angular 2 router what the base URL is going to be for our application. Since everything is going to be at the root, we're just going to put a forward slash here and that will be done with it. Now we already have the router module since we added the Angular router to our package.json, but the difference is we can't just add it to our app module and expect it to work. The reason for this is because we have to actually configure the routes that are going to go into our router module. First, let's remove the custom elements we have here. We won't be needing those anymore. And let's close all these out just to get a clean slate. How would we introduce a module into our application? Let's take, for instance, the forms module, which we dealt with in the Angular 2 Getting Started Guide. Here, we would just go into the very top of this, import forms module from Angular forms. Then we would add that to our imports. And that would be the end of it. The difference is the router module actually requires configuration first before we can include it. So we're going to create our own new file where we can configure it and then we'll import it into the ng module. We'll create a new file app.routing.ts and this is where all of our base routing is going to live. We're going to import the router module from the Angular router. We're going to create constant app routes and this is just going to be an array of the routes we have. The first one is the home page which is going to be a blank. The component is the home component. The second is going to be the about. And notice we're not putting any forward slashes before any of these words. And the Angular router can go ahead and deal with all of that for us and know exactly what the path is supposed to be. 
we'll do component here is supposed to be the about component. And the same goes for the contact component. Now we are using these three components here. We actually need to import them. We'll go take those import statements from the app module. Okay, great. So we've defined these routes and we are using our three components, but we actually have to give these routes to the router module. To do that, we're going to go export constant app routing and this is going to be the module. We'll do router module dot for root and pass in the app routes there. That will be everything that we need to configure this router module. And notice we're doing four routes since this is the base routing for our overall application. If you start to have child routers, you would use for child instead. And we'll talk about that later in this course when we actually do child routing. Next, we just need to import this into app module. We'll import app routing from app.routing and we'll pass this in here, app routing. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Nothing's really changed in our app. And if we go look at our console, we'll notice that there's a couple errors. The main error here is that we cannot find the primary outlet for loading the home component. So this means the Angular router knows that since there's no forward slash or anything after this, we are at the home page, but it doesn't know where to output the home component. We actually need to give it a space. In app component, this is where we declare what's coming out of our app. We'll delete this jumbotron and we'll add the main tag here. And inside of the main tag, this will be the outlet for our router. The Angular router requires an router outlet to know exactly where to output those components. Save that. Let's take a look. And now we have the home page. Go to forward slash about. We have the about page as well and the same for contact. Perfect. So just like that, we've been able to configure a router using app routes, and we've configured our router module, and all we had to do was include it under the app module, and then the Angular 2 router took care of all of that other stuff for us. The last thing I want to do since we're using TypeScript and we want to use all the benefits that the Angular 2 development cycle gives us, let's add a little bit of type safety to this. And what I mean by that is we can make sure that we know that these app routes are valid when we're passing these in. So let's say we delete the component here. There are absolutely no errors given to us that this is not going to be valid and our app is not going to be able to run. All we have to do to make sure that this is a little more valid, we'll import routes as well. And this is just a way for TypeScript to know exactly what should come out of this constant app routes. We'll set the type here for routes. And notice immediately we're getting the error here that this is not assignable to the route. And that's because component doesn't actually exist, or component, component does not exist. Once we put the P in there, everything is good. Just one of the benefits that Angular 2 and TypeScript provides us is incredible tooling in our editors to catch errors before we even get to the browser. And one more thing that's recommended when we're doing this is import module with providers from Angular Core. And that's what our app routing is going to be, a module with providers. Let's take a look at that again. Our app is running once again. Let's go to the home page. Everything works there. The about page also works. 
All right, so that is the basis of a routing Angular 2 application. You just define your routes, you declare them in your app module, and you are good to go. Next up, we'll take a look at how we can actually make these actual links that go over to our different pages.